I'm a creative technologist, and the, the focus of my work is on public installations. Um, and one of my driving passions is this idea of exploring nature and trying to find hidden data within nature. And it seems to me that there's this latent potential everywhere, um, all around us. Everything gives out some kind of data, whether it's sound or smell or vibration. And through my work, I've been trying to find ways to harness and unveil this. And so this basically led me to a subject called cymatics. Now, cymatics is the process of visualizing sound by basically vibrating a medium such as sand or water, as you can see there. So if we have a quick look at the history of cymatics, beginning with the observations of resonance by da Vinci, Galileo, the English scientist Robert Hooke, and then Ernest Cladney. And he created an experiment using a metal plate, covering it with sand, and then bowing it um, to create the Cladney patterns that you see here on the right. Moving on from this, the next person to explore this field was a gentleman called Hans Jenny in the 1970s. And he actually coined the term cymatics. And then bringing us into the present day is a fellow collaborator of mine and cymatics expert, uh, John Stuart Reed. And he's kindly recreated for us the Cladney experiment. What we can see here is um, a metal sheet, this time connected to a sound driver and being fed by a frequency generator. And as the frequencies increase, so do the complexities of the patterns that appear on the plate, as you can see for your own eyes. So, what excites me about cymatics? Well, for me, cymatics is an almost magical tool. Um, it's like a, a looking glass into a hidden world. And through the numerous ways that we can apply cymatics, we can actually start to unveil the substance of things not seen. Devices like the cymoscope that you can see here are being used to scientifically observe cymatic patterns. And the list of scientific applications is growing every day. For example, in oceanography, a lexicon of dolphin language is actually being created by basically visualizing the sonar beams that the dolphins emit. And hopefully in the future, we'll be able to gain some deeper understanding of how they communicate. We can also use cymatics for healing and education. This is an installation developed with school children where their hands are tracked, and it allows them to control and position cymatic patterns and the reflections that are caused by them. We can also use cymatics as a beautiful natural art form. This image here is created from a snippet of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony playing through a cymatic device. So it kind of flips things on its head a little bit. And this is Pink Floyd's machine um, playing in real time through the cymoscope. We can also use cymatics as a looking glass into nature, and we can actually recreate the archetypal forms of nature. So for example, here on the left, we can see a snowflake, as it would appear in nature. And then on the right, we can see a cymatically created snowflake. And here's a starfish and a cymatic starfish. And there's thousands of these. So what does this all mean? Well, there's still a lot to explore, and it's early days, and there's not many people working in this field. But consider for a moment that sound does have form, and we've seen that it can affect matter and cause form within matter. Then sort of take a leap and think about the universe forming, and think about the immense sound of the universe forming. And if we you know, kind of ponder on that, then perhaps cymatics had an influence on the formation of the universe itself. And here's some eye candy for you from a range of DIY scientists and artists from all over the globe. And cymatics is accessible to everybody, and I want to urge everybody here to apply your passion, your knowledge, and your skills to areas like cymatics. And I think collectively we can, we can build a global community, we can inspire each other, and we can evolve this exploration of the substance of things not seen. Thank you.